so it's day 10 we got 40 more days to prepare for the void invasion where i add the void faction to our game and they're probably not going to raid us like the day that i add them but at any point past day 50 we could get a void raid so we might even have 60 days to prepare i'm not really sure but 50 for sure so here's our starter base i'll just do a quick overview of like what we got going on we got our crafting room over here i just built this assembly bench which i found out we cannot move with this thing that we can make components and advanced components we did actually start with 20 advanced components with this scenario the new mass effect scenario for some reason there's 18 here two over here I'm not sure why they're not together but yeah we have 20 advanced components which is going to be pretty nice but yeah with the assembly bench we can start turning steel into components which is going to be great and we've been using those components to make some tools with morden which i've been thinking about what we want to do with morden in terms of making use of his perfectionist trait which makes him make better quality stuff like his first knife he made was excellent and the second one was masterwork which had this really good infusion on it that lowers incoming damage gives extra armor to whoever is using it and it has really good dps for a knife and it's a one-hander and then i had to make some tools which took a lot of work to make 250 work for this jackhammer which only turned out to be good and the jackhammer doesn't really do that good at dps either it does increase mining speed by 80 percent so we kind of need it but we could have bought just a normal quality one from a trader we also made a chainsaw and it turned out to be excellent and again this was a mistake because we don't need our chainsaw to be excellent like the dps is 16.5 which is pretty high but it has zero percent armor pen so it's actually not that good of a weapon it increases plan work speed by 80 percent so it's like a tool but it takes 250 work like we should not be making tools with morden i think i will have morden finish up this grinder though if it does end up being a excellent or masterwork one that could be really good because grinders as a tool are actually pretty good in combat and he's already done 90 work on it he only has 147 left so we're just going to finish that up in our prisoner cell we also have some prisoners healing up and this guy merle is actually really good he's magically gifted and tough and solarians get 25 percent extra shooting accuracy so we're going to turn this guy into a technomancer after we recruit him if we can find the technomancer tome and that's one thing we're going to be looking out for mainly from traders that we're going to call in but before we do that we need a lot of silver to call them in each trader costs 500 silver and right now we have this stack of silver 1168 plus this stack of 2350 which is around 3500 and we got that silver mainly from wanders that were joining us after we would defeat raids we'd get a wander join events thanks to igor invader our storyteller who sends us a bunch of raids but then gives us a pause event afterwards there was also this furry fox guy that we bandaged up i sold him off and then an ancient that we captured i sold him off too i think i sold him off for like 500 to pop but yeah so right now we got 3500 silver to work with we're about to get a bit more though if we can take on these thrombos so i have an idea on how we can kind of cheese these thrombos first we're going to set up an embrasure right here so we can shoot at them Oh, we got a raid. Wait, this is perfect. Okay. This could not have been timed any better, actually. 44% chance, I guess, because it's beyond a tree. And then Thrumbo Revenged. Do we have a way into our base right now? Because they're going towards our base. I don't think so, right? Why are they going to the west, though? Maybe they're just kind of manhunting outside of our walls. Okay, yeah, they're not attacking our walls. Phew. So these Thrumbos are going to be kind of watchful protectors for this raid that's about to attack us, which is great. Oh, and this raid is freaking massive, by the way. There's a lot of these Krogans actually that are attacking us. This is a Krogan raid. So the raiders are coming from the northeast. We got the Thrumbos wandering outside of our walls. And down here we got a tome that we opened in the last episode. It's going to be interesting to see if these guys decide to go for the Thrumbos or the tome. I hope they go for the Thrumbos because there's actually some really nice stuff in the tome. And I'm pretty sure they will be able to clear out whatever is in the tome. Looks like one guy is going down for the tome, but then, yeah, these guys are going for the thrombos, which I actually would not be surprised if the thrombos just get obliterated by these Krogans. Krogans have this ability Blood Rage. Okay, well, this guy's high on Gojus too, so that's increasing his stats by quite a bit, but Blood Rage increases their movement whenever they take damage, which helps their melee combat ability because the more movement you have, the more dodge you get. And okay, it looks like the thrombos are not even going to take out one person. That's not exactly what I was expecting. Well, this thrombo might. It is full hp the other one was a little bit wounded but yeah, we should start preparing for the inevitable which is these guys coming for us i think as long as we don't open our doors these raiders will go for the tome inhabitants though after yeah i think they're going for the tome which is good for us we don't want them to be able to take out whatever is inside the tome though oh this guy's setting fire to our wall which is fine we can just have someone come over here and put it out but yeah i think we're now going to chase these guys we don't want to chase them too closely because they will turn around to us i believe let's get rex and grill over here they're taking damage grill took quite a bit of damage actually he's going to bleed out in 17 hours crap okay yeah, and these guys are turning around morden should not be up here by the way um, I might have played this poorly, to be honest. Let's just pull back. Oh, man. Just get out of line of sight, mainly. Grill got hit again. 
Morton's getting tagged. That freaking charge pistol is brutal, man. It is ripping us up. As long as we get these guys in melee, we're fine. Grill's using a pretty crappy weapon, by the way, this chainsaw. Let's have him pop smoke, actually. You know, we're using a chainsaw that has no armor pen against a tier 3 android that has 40% built-in armor. Like, that was just so ineffective. And then I had more than melee. Like, come on, dude. But yeah, Rex is using the masterwork knife. Okay, nice. We killed that guy. I don't think I was having him use that before. This dude, Rartak, is a woodsman, which does lowers aiming time by 15% only. Okay, so it's not that big of a deal. Let's just get these guys in here and melee these dudes. We have better melee weapons, yeah. And then, yeah, you see the tend. Was that like a bad tend? I think it might have been. But yeah, Grill will tend up his own injuries. We knocked that guy out or killed him. Oh, let's see, how are the raiders doing in this tome over here? So it is good, actually, that we went out to ambush the raiders when we did, because you can see, like, they just destroyed the tome inhabitants. But yeah, so these guys are split up, which, like, could we have taken these guys if they weren't? We're just going to charge them, by the way. I'm just going to have Morton come in here, too, and help out. If we take out, like, a few more of these guys, they should run, I'm guessing. Oh, man, that guy took so much damage. Okay, just dip out. We just need to get a better cover area back here. The girl's tending himself up. How's Rex doing? He's in no immediate danger, actually. He's only bleeding at 7.7%. And then Morden's actually in no danger, too. And you know what we'll actually do? We'll come back into this tome. So there's one of these caskets that we shot at. Oh, please don't get hit. Okay, Morden actually blocked that attack. Crap. We're moving so slow compared to these guys. Wait, that guy's running because he's a coward. Very nice. Let's have Rex pull back and let's try to open up these caskets. And there's just one person. Masky sucks anyway, so yeah, that doesn't really matter. Just pull Morden back and then Rex back too. And then melee this guy. We just need to kill like two more of them. We kill that guy. Nice. Like two more of them. We should be good, honestly. Okay. I don't know why they're not running yet. These guys are just freaking beasts. Maybe the Krogans just don't run. I'm running, finally. We will try to chase them down. Even though with the running gun, they will gun at us while they're running away. So, okay, that's an EMP. I thought that was like some kind of grenade launcher. And we run this guy down. Get Morton over here. Shoot at him. Oh, uh, no, don't shoot at him. Maybe you can capture Mosky, I guess. We can sell him off. He's got six hours. Oh, nice. We knocked out this Krogan, who is not especially good. He's only got three hours left. Wow. I mean, we'll capture him for sure. And if we can't save him, we can sell him off to Rimdeed before he bleeds out. Put some prisoner beds in there. And yeah, who's going to capture him then? Who's going to run down like this Necromancer, actually? It'd be really good to run him down. We'll have Rex try to do that because Rex is actually still moving at 119% because of Blood Rage. Increases movements. This dude is moving only at 100. So Rex should be able to run him down, maybe? Ordinarily, I would also say like we should probably just have Rex go heal up just in case we get raided again. But Krogan's do have a 600% base healing rate. Oh, he's getting lit up right now. Nice, we were able to get on that guy though. Yeah, natural healing factor times 600%. And they bleed less too. Come on, knock this guy out, that'd be really good. Pick up a necromancer that we could either recruit or sell. It'd be amazing. Wait, he's got eight hours. Should we just, no, never mind. Okay, now we'll let Rex go heal up. We'll pick this guy up actually too. We can skin him and pick up all this stuff. So Morden's bleeding pretty good. He's actually in a really bad mood too. He's about to have a mental breakdown, which is actually kind of good. Because when he has mental breakdowns, he can make nicer stuff. This dude, the Krogan, is going to bleed out in 0.9 hours. I'm not really sure if it's worth it to use good medicine on him. I think we're just going to use regular. And he's got two hours left now. Mosky's got four. I don't even know if we worry about bandaging up Mosky, to be honest. Like we can sell him off, but like his traits really suck. So I don't think he's going to sell off for much. We should bandage up Morden and Rex. We need them to start healing up. Yeah, he's got three hours left. Let's have Tali come over here and use some regular medicine on Morden. We got Ambrosia Sprout. I guess that was our positive event. Not anything too crazy positive. But yeah, we'll use regular medicine on Morden. We don't really care about him healing up too quickly. We want Rex to heal up fast though, so I'm actually going to use Glitter World on his injuries. I'm not sure how much Glitter World we're going to need, but yeah, we got some of this from clearing out a tome. Okay, I think that was two Glitter World, but it tended up a lot of his injuries, so it makes me think that it was actually more. I'm not really sure, but Guril is already back to full HP. The guy heals so quickly. Adaptable gives him 400% natural healing rate, and then he Tens his wounds with amazing tens. Like they were like 160% on some of them. I feel like he also has an ability that will just heal himself randomly. I'm not sure how that works. And I kind of wasn't paying attention with this Krogan. He's only got 0.6 hours to live. We are going to use regular medicine on him though. I would like him to heal quickly because we could sell him off for a full price once he gets up to full HP. So 0.3 hours, 0.9. So yeah, he will live. He's got a lot of blood loss though because he doesn't even have that many wounds and he's bleeding at 22%, but he was still going to bleed out in less than an hour. Oh, and then Mosky's dead. Oops, I just let him die. <laughs> okay. 
whatever it is. It's like a loss of 500 silver, but that's okay. So we started the episode on day 10. We got raided on day 10.13, I think. So literally like two hours into day 10, we got raided. And now we're getting raided again on day 11.79. Our wealth did go up by quite a bit. We're at 90K now. And yeah, we're getting a pretty appropriate raid to our wealth, I guess, because it's by a Thrumkin tribe. And these Thrumkins not only have more HP than normal colonists, they do more damage in melee and like they can stab you with their horns. So I want to call in a combat supplier to potentially get some better armor or something that could help us, but we're out of power. These solar generators are just not cutting it anymore. And yes, yeah, so we're gonna have to build a wood fire generator and hopefully that's gonna be enough to power up this comms console. Can we connect the com- oh we can connect the comms console directly to this generator. Then we also need to power up this orbital trade beacon too. Which, okay, we can connect that to the generator as well. So this will work out. Now we just need to have Rex haul everything of value into this room and see where these Thrumkins are at. Okay, so they're tunneling into our base because they're sappers and they're just tunneling through this mountain, I guess. So we have quite a bit of time, I think. Let's first do a Bulkets Trader. They can have some armor as well, as far as I know, but mainly we just want to sell them the Krogan meats, the Thrombonian leather and Thrombo fur. That will sell for quite a bit. We could make that into some gear as well and that would actually sell for way more, I think, if we make it into gear because Morden's going to make it into something really nice. So we'd rather not sell off the Thrombo fur if we can help it. See, so yeah, I think we will do that if if we do get something good from this combat supplier. So I'm seeing a heavier nano machinery cleaver. This thing does 55 DPS and 100% armor pen. So yeah, nano machinery is, well, it's a very interesting material type. In our normal runs, I would ban this material, but since we're going up against void, everything goes basically. And yeah, this is part of the Architect expanded mod. Or if we want to go for something more arguably balanced and more cost efficient, we could go for this crypto hammer, which does an okay amount of damage in armor pen. But the main thing is it will freeze people and give them hypothermia and I believe it makes it easier to capture them. So this would be a good investment for taking prisoners. I think we should actually just go for the Crypto Hammer. See, so yeah, we're going to buy that Crypto Hammer and then we're also going to call in another combat supplier and we're going to hope they have a Crypto Weapon, which they do. They have a Crypto Axe, a normal quality one, and this thing costs 1409 So let's see if we can farm that. Let's solve this Flak Vest. So I found out that different lumber types sell for different amounts and Cypress Lumber sells for a lot. It's got a market value of three bucks a pop and the reason being is because it has such high max HP for wood. They're not as tanky as steel but i think the walls also do add beauty whereas steel does not but yeah we have 784 of that and that's going to give us 1800 silver plus every time we butcher up a human or an animal we get bones we've got a thousand of those in our stockpile right now so we sell those off now we are going to have two crypto weapons we're also going to have rex down this go juice and thankfully he did not get addicted to it but it also increases recreation he was getting kind of low on recreation so his mood's going to be good mainly now these on go juice we're going to have him show these raiders how it's done so they're trying to mine into this mountain because i guess it's on the way to our base and Rex is going to be mining much quicker than them because he's on go juice and he has this jackhammer and okay we're now going to have him head down here to this tome there's a bunch of them on the map I'm not sure if we actually want to open that wall I think we want to open this one because we'll have cover if we run north yeah see like they have mechs inside of here they're not hostile though which is not ideal I don't think these guys are going to aggro on them there's another tome to the south though can we walk past this Okay, so we'll just leave that tome to its own devices and we'll go on this one. And hopefully whatever's in here will be hostile. Some insects, like three insects. They're hostile, but it's not. Okay, there's Geth coming for us. Oh no, we're trapped between Geth and insects. Wait, why are these guys now aggroing on us? This is so bad. We're in such a bad spot. Better to go for the <laughs> aggro on the insects. They shot the insects though. That freaking mega scarab just got obliterated and it tanked for Rex, I guess. Oh man, Rex got headshot, but he didn't get hit that badly. Like if he tanked this Geth Prime's weapon, which is this M76 Revenant, it fires burst shot counts of 60, which do five damage each only. But yeah, that thing literally unloaded 60 shots in a matter of seconds, like half a second it felt like. I guess these guys are hostile. Like, I don't know what's going on with that, but we're gonna have Rex not stop moving. Why are these guys so hostile towards these insects? Like, that's what I don't understand. This is just a really awkward situation. I'm not sure what to do. Cause like, we could try to have Rex. Okay, Olga is gonna aggro on Rex, that's good. Now we have him head down here. So, okay, there's a way out kind of like, we can have him go south. We're just gonna walk down this way. And then hopefully Olga is gonna aggro on these guys. No, she's not. I mean, we do have time here. The Raiders are just gonna chill for a bit. I just feel like these mechs are not gonna aggro on the Raiders. Maybe they will. Maybe they are hostile, I don't know. I think just freaking obliterated that insect hive. Yeah, are they hostile? Or what's going on? 
they're not hostile. They just really did not like insects being in their territory. Okay, well, we opened up two tomes over here. That did not really pan out. Now we're gonna go over here to the east and there's another one we're gonna open. We got tomes for days, so hopefully, it's just some insects, man. Come on. Where's some pissed off mechs when you need them? The problem now is like we open up this tome, whatever's inside of it. Can you stop trying to eat your meal, dude? Whatever's inside this tome though. So it's looking like they're already heading towards us. Like, I, well, I can't really tell. We're just gonna Rex run this way. Okay, yeah, they're pretty hostile, I think. Maybe they're just going for the insects like the other tome did. While we're out here, by the way, this other tome did have some nice stuff in it. We're just going to have Rex pick that up. There was actually a homing infuser, which is this legendary enchant that increases damage and accuracy of a ranged weapon. We just don't have any ranged weapon users, really, aside from Morden or any weapons that would really justify us using a legendary enchant on them. Oh, and okay, these caskets got open, which is horrible for us. We want these mechs to go for these raiders, like not people that are in these caskets. Okay, we're running out of tomes to open here. We're just going to open up this one. That's near our base. We're just gonna hope that there's something. It's just freaking stupid insects, dude. That really sucks too that they open up these caskets because Alec is actually a Technomancer. I'm not sure if the mechs knocked him out or if he was knocked out from the casket, but yeah. It would have been nice to capture him and sell him off, but yeah, the mechs just ruined that for us because they had to uh, take care of the insects. Oh, nice. On the bright side though, Morda did make a masterwork grinder, which has a value of 1355, which is kind of a good and a bad thing. It's a bad thing because I don't know if we're actually going to use it. And if we just use it as a tool, then it's going to be just increasing our market value. But yeah, the grinder has quite a bit of armor pen, actually over 100%, which I don't know if over 100% armor pen is going to actually help. DPS is pretty high too for the fact that it has that much armor pen. And it's got two enchants on it, which is also really nice. I think we will use the crypto weapons though when we can, just so we can take more prisoners. Oh, and these insects are aggroing onto these dudes. I don't know where they came from. Maybe the tome we just opened. The insects were really hostile. Yeah, so they're fighting over here. And then we got this demolisher coming in, which is going to be doing some damage to these guys. That's nice. I don't know. Like, why are you guys ignoring the insects? What are you doing? Oh, you're trying to eat the pemmican. And Rex, how did you even get out here, dude? Oh, one of these walls was opened? That was a mistake. Well, let's have him rebuild those walls real quick. Not that it really is going to matter too much. The main thing is we just need to make sure that the raiders are going to be fighting the mechs, which the raiders are on the way towards our base. So yeah, they will be. The demolisher does really good damage in melee, so it could potentially... They're giving up after all this buildup in the mining and everything. They're trying to leave. I'm okay with it. Like, I'm fine with that outcome. Is firing demolisher charge of these guys, which I don't think they do that much damage to people. They do damage to walls and stuff. And you can teach our other magically gifted person how to become a Technomancer. Got 10 hours though. He's gonna run right into the centipede. There's a pretty good chance he gets knocked out. I mean, fairly okay. 10 hours left. Oh, he's dead. Freaking A. So the two mechs left up are now heading for our base. And okay, nice. We opened up his casket pretty instantly. And we're just gonna dip out. Looks like these ancients are... I was gonna say they're at war with each other, but they're just attacking the hives. These ancients are really hostile too. So yeah, we're gonna have to fight them for sure after they're done with the mechs. But this demolisher, once it starts meleeing, it's still doing the demolisher charge thing. Nice, it killed this guy. And do keep in mind, these ancients are under the effect of crypto sleep sickness, which lowers their consciousness. That guy's dead. Looks like the mechs are actually doing work here on these guys. We might not even have to do anything after all. So this is going to be a really good opportunity to try out our new crypto weapons. Simon and Washkiska are out of ammo. This dude is not though. This pump, but okay, nice. We were able to get on him pretty quickly. And yeah, we're going to try to free... Never mind, he's dead. And yeah, we killed that person too. Okay, well, the crypto weapons are not doing so good uh, taking prisoners. So this thrombo meat was about to go bad. And I called in a bull goods trader, sold that, as well as a bunch of leathers. We kept the Krogan leather and thrombo fur though. I want to try making that into gear. We can sell it off for a pretty nice profit, I think. We also sold the moss some extra lumber that we had just kind of lying around. And it just so happened that this bull goods trader had two orbs of souls. And I wasn't sure if I was going to use these on this run. But since our goal is to become as OP as possible so we can maybe have a chance of defeating Void, I'm just going to say anything goes here. And so yeah, we end up picking up both these Orbs of Souls and we'll go into kind of what they're useful for later. We're getting a tribal raid and they're attacking from three sides. So this can be a fat raid. So on the bright side, these are just normal raiders and they did actually prepare for a while and now they're attacking. They're going for these mechs first though, since they're not sappers. And they're gonna behave like good little raiders. And it looks like that one's dead. Um, that was their entertainer, their caster, but 
Yeah, okay, these guys are fleeing. That was just their smallest group of three. Beaver is actually a caster. I was thinking about using the Orbisols on her, and we could steal the Chaos Mage trait, and Efficient Builder is actually not bad too. Okay, actually, that one sucks. Increases success chance, but once you have, I think it's like eight construction, there's no chance for you to fail anything you're building. So yeah, that trait blows. Yeah, we don't want to use the Orbisols on her. We want to use the Orbisols on a caster that's got like, I don't know, just a couple traits. Can we shoot this person through the embrasure? No. There we go. Door is open. Now we can shoot them, I guess. This is actually cool. We're kind of uh, using game mechanics here to our advantage. How long does Goshawk have? Eight hours. Goshawk is magically gifted. Let's try to let them bleed out. Yeah, we'll just let her... Oh, they're going to steal what they can and leave. Okay, wait. No, that's not good. There's a lot of really good stuff out here. Let's run them down. See if we can knock this person out. Nope. Girl got hit too, but it's not too bad, I think. Knocked out that dude's weapon. It's actually really good. They're so split up. We can try to just knock her out with one of our crypto weapons. And she's dead. I feel like we knocked her out there and then Morden killed her. Morden, what are you doing, dude? I mean, I did tell you to do that, but you're supposed to know better. Uh, Chaos Mage casted the shield on themselves. Let's just back off a little bit. And they're all coming for us. I thought they were going to steal what they can and leave. Maybe just some of them are trying to steal. The rest of them are trying to fight us. At this point, there's only a few of them left, and they don't have that good weapons. Person's dead. Very nice. I mean, Thrumkins do have increased combat ability, but it's not looking like they're going to be much of a match against the you know, They're running. Bully just running. We knocked that dude out. One more and capture him for hypothermia stops affecting him because yeah the way these weapons work these crypto weapons is that they'll give people hypothermia for not that long okay beaver got out from one of the tomes we opened earlier there was a medical trainer we're gonna have tolly learn that and it's gonna boost her up to 60 medical we're just trying to dump off our wealth right now because after opening up all those tomes we're up to 133k wealth part of that's from the items inside of them but part of that is just from the tomes themselves as for we're gonna sell this bulk as trader so our positive event was a bunch of roosters and hens joined us we're just gonna sell them. We'll sell this chem fuel. We can make that really easily. And then way down here, we got this anti-green warhead that I think we're just going to sell because we can't really use it that effectively. We don't have anyone that's that accurate with mortars. So I feel like this is kind of a waste to have. It could help us against void later on, but we're going to have to hold on to it for a long time. I guess we don't have to decide yet because we have these blood runes that we can sell. I'm pretty sure we have a greater one lying around somewhere and then this pain stopper and then some lumber and that will buy all their silver. We also have some exotic goods that only an exotic good trader will buy. Mainly these thrum Rumble horns, two of them for 1200. These guys do have two crafting skill trainers. Okay, we're definitely gonna buy those. That's really lucky. And then we'll sell them the psychic animal trainer that will fully train up an animal. It won't tame it though. So we have to tame the animal. Then we can train it up fully, like its ability to haul and all that stuff. But yeah, we don't need it. I wanna hold on to this terror pulsar though. It could save us in a really sticky situation. I don't think it works against void, but it does work against normal raiders and it will make them flee. We could also use this to raid, by the way. We could actually go raid another faction right now if we wanted to and we'll basically win the raid for us that could be a fun thing to do like we could go over to raiders village this query and settlement we could just raid them we'd want to definitely raid a higher tier faction with that thing maybe like this alliance fleet settlement this is actually really cool timing that we just got those crafting skill trainers it's going to give morden a bunch of crafting xp he actually only learns crafting at 60 percent efficiency i did not realize that the inspiring interest only learns at 60 percent whatever though that got him up to 15 now he's up to 16 yeah if he was like compulsion inspiration towards crafting that could have just boosted him up to 20 i bet regardless though it is good timing because he's now trying to make a thrombo for duster and that should sell off for quite a bit the duster has quite a big market value because it takes a lot of work to make and it takes 80 of the material so i think that's going to be one of the more worth things to make with that thrombo for we'll see though how it turns out nice he made a masterwork one that's gonna sell for a bunch i bet 3180 for that thing oh yeah that's what i'm talking about and i guess the enchants are also increased the market value by 10 percent and yeah i don't think you can wear this with a power armor so we're definitely gonna sell it off are we do a combat supplier i don't know if an exotic goods trader would buy it we could try an exotic goods trader we need arcane tomes from them it does cost us 500 silver to find out and wait these guys have two more crafting skill trainers dude the chance of that are so low like i've called in probably hundreds of these things and i've seen crafting skill trainers maybe like 
six times getting them back to back is just absolutely insane but yeah we will pick up both their crafting skill trainers as far as our goods like they won't really buy any of this stuff that we have so in an effort to sell off the masterwork duster we ended up calling in a combat supplier and they won't actually buy it they did however have this persona crypto crossbow that had this really cool trait kill happy that increases the mood of whoever gets kills with it like bloodlust unfortunately i do forget to buy it but these persona crypto weapons are actually not that rare with the persona cryptek mod which allows crypto weapons to have persona traits in the first place and basically with persona traits you have to bond the weapon to someone and no one else can use it but it does get increased stats like it has six more damage than a regular crypto crossbow but yeah that's one thing we're going to keep out and look for is a really good persona crypto range weapon two of them would be ideal because we have two people that can do range now so yeah combat suppliers for some reason will not buy clothing so we had to call in a bulk of trader and this one happened to have 11 of this pico machinery material it's pretty rare material from what i've seen but if we get more of it we can turn it into a weapon i think we need 30 for a knife oh then no, we're actually not broke at all we have this greater blood rune that has a value of 2700 which we're going to sell to the exotic goods trader that we just bought the crafting skill trainers from speaking of the crafting skill trainers we're going to have morden learn those before he makes any more of those throw them over dusters it's probably going to get him up to like okay that one's up to 17 18 would be good yeah he's up to 18 almost 19 actually so with the rest of our silver i was looking over the rim deed applicants to see if any of these guys could help us out potentially and this asari was which apparently their species can reproduce with the partner of any gender or species. The main thing though with this girl is that she's a green thumb, which increases her plant work speed and harvest yield by quite a bit. Combine that with ecologist that increases plant harvest yield. This girl will be a really good planter. So yeah, we're gonna pick this girl up and we're just gonna have her start chopping down trees like crazy. Like just literally all these trees. Cause yeah, we're on a woodland tile. So we have a plethora of trees just everywhere. While she's gonna be doing the tree chopping, we're gonna have Merle do the lumber processing and crap, we got a power outage again. I guess we actually can use the woodworking table if we don't have power, but we just use it much slower. But yeah, Merle was the magically gifted guy that we kept trying to recruit and eventually we were able to recruit him. He has seven crafting, so he'll be doing the lumber cutting for now. And we'll have more than just work on making these thrombo for dust. He did actually just make an excellent one too, which has a value of 1735. And that's still way more worth than just selling off the Thermofer by itself. Thermofer is a market value of 11 silver each, so 80 of it's going to be 880 market value. As long as we make something that has more than that, then it was worth. But yeah, we will sell off this Masterwork Duster for 2378. They won't even buy this one unless we buy like this Crypto Shield, which we can't really use right now because our Crypto Weapons are two-handed weapons. We could actually use it with a pistol though. And this trader does happen to have a regular Crypto Pistol that we can use with the Crypto shield it's not like a persona pistol or anything but it will be good for now we get that for morden plus we end up getting him a commando armor helmet which lowers aiming time by 30 percent so the dude just got some pretty big upgrades which we're gonna need for this upcoming siege here we go we're getting sieged by a lot of krogans by the looks of it oh but it actually is a good siege for us because the raid went wrong two of these guys are dead already wait a lot of these guys are dead Okay, that was pretty lucky. This raid should have been quite a bit fatter. So as we're getting seized here, I started calling in some combat suppliers just to see if we can get anything to help us. That's when we bought the crypto pistol and the commando helmet. And we also get this commando armor for Rex that increases carrying capacity and movement speed and gives them quite a bit of armor. So that's gonna help a lot. We try to bombard these guys with mortar shots, but we have no one that's really all that accurate. And they end up hitting this shot in the middle of our stockpile room. We end up losing six advanced components here and five mana potions. Plus I was looking at the durabilities of like this leather. It's it's at like 2 HP I think and also these components and advanced components were also almost destroyed and they almost hit these high explosive rounds which would have set off a chain reaction. They might have even killed Tali actually. So in an effort to draw out the raiders I have Morden use the anti-mater rifle and he's not been able to hit any shots thus far so I try to have him get a bit closer and almost immediately he gets hit three times by the service rifle. Damn it truck. He's fine he's bleeding at 75% and oh, we killed an android. We weren't even aiming for that thing. We were actually aiming for the dude behind him. What's cool out doing? Don't be a hero, dude. Do not be a hero, bro. Okay, you're gonna try to eat food right in front of us. We're gonna try to knock you out. And then we're out of industrial rounds, so we actually cannot shoot these guys anymore. Hopefully we just knock this guy out and then they're gonna charge at us. Please stop firing mortars. Okay, that actually was close to hitting our main dudes. The Morden should probably Pretty sure he's hitting on our own, guys. Let's actually capture this guy. Let's dip out of here. Yeah, that was the crypto weapons for you. Okay, maybe we can actually just sneak on by. How are you hitting that? He's behind wall. 
You're hacking, dude. Let me kill that guy. Okay. And they're assaulting us. Okay, we can pull back to a better position. Little girl is getting lit the heck up. That's not good. He's tending himself. These guys are moving way quicker, so I think we're gonna have to fight. Morden is gonna pull out his crypto pistol, and we have a charged pistol for Merle. And the girl also has smoke, a smoke pop belt, so we're gonna pop that. And then we have no space or ammo. Oh crap, and they polymorphed Grill. That's not good. I mean, this dude's gonna be easy to kill. I hate that ability, polymorph. It's like the worst one in the game to face. Who casted it? Oh, is Cracks in there, Enchanter? We could have Rex just devour Cracks and Soul. We have three of these items. We can try to do it. It's a big cast, though. Oh, okay, we're not gonna get it off. Can maybe drop that weapon, and then Merle can try to do it, because Merle has no ammo. Oh man, this is brutal. This is just not a situation that... It's good to be in, really, for us. Rex is just tanking. Oh, Kraxton got knocked out. Okay, wait, capture him. There's no prisoner beds. Does it matter, dude? Just capture him. Okay, I put down the prisoner bed. Merle, just capture him and get out of here. That's their enchanter. If he can capture him before he gets up, nice. The Titareg revenged. Whatever that means. I guess one of the raiders that the enchanter turned into... A, okay, we killed that animal. So yeah, Grill right now is a wild boar. We want to make sure that he does not take damage, like at all costs, because he could get killed easily here. No, you gotta just run, Grill. Oh, he's getting injured so bad. Like, he has very low HP on his body parts. I hate that ability. I honestly hate that ability. Next time I see an enchanter, I'm just gonna instantly... Oh god, he's got 20 hours left. Please don't kill Grill. The enchantment is about to run off, so... He just has to survive for not that much more time. Let's have Morden actually come out here and tank a little bit. And we're getting lag. We're getting a raid. Oh, paid heat wave. We can pay for a heat wave to come to our territory for some honor. I'm not really gonna worry about that right now. We knocked out Wardock. The guy's a natural genius, perceptive, increases shooting accuracy, and he's a gun nut. This guy would be good to capture. We're capturing a lot of people on the bright side. Oh, and yeah, he has extreme hypothermia right now because he tanked so many crypto hits. Do we have someone capture him? Like Morden? And then, okay, Grill snapped out of his enchantment. He's gonna have to heal himself up. And then we just dip, I think. Pop smoke, maybe. I don't know if we can get out of here. Like, I think they're gonna be able to run us down. Oh, Grill got downed. We have to rescue Grill. He's gonna get back up momentarily because he tends himself. Maybe we don't worry about it. And we have Rex. Okay, let's just fight this out, actually. Oh, crap. We dropped Wardock and he recovered from his hypothermia. So we got back up. Now Morden's out of space or ammo. This is a disaster, honestly. We could easily lose here. That polymorph was just so nasty because Grill was just taking so much damage. I honestly don't know what to do. Like, Morden's gonna have to come over here. He has a smoke pop belt so he can pop smoke for Rex. Pop smoke right here. And then Rex is just gonna have to do some. Oh, nice. They're running. That's really good. Rex is actually in no immediate danger, so he's fine. And then Grill should be fine too. Somebody went berserk. I think one of our prisoners went berserk. Not worried about it. But yeah, dude, who is the freaking guy firing? It was like an LMG or something. They have a carbine, a service rifle. This dude had a minigun. That was what was just destroying us. Assault rifle and water rog. Like, these guys are not messing around, man. That was one of the more rough fights, honestly. And Morden, just get out of line of sight, dude. And we killed that guy. All right, rescue Grill. And all right, so I just got done editing up to this point. We're only on day 16.86 is when that raid just ended. And everyone's just in a terrible mood. Rex is on edge. Grill's mood is about to go down to zero. Dude, I just realized part of the reason why Grill's in such a bad mood is because polymorphed against the will gives negative 18 mood for, well, 2.5 more days. Merle's mood is horrible. Like, it's actually going up, thankfully. Rex's mood should be going up soon. Oh, he's watching for target right now. Now. Okay, that's a fail. If Rex has a bad mental breakdown, that could be disastrous. We need some drugs to improve people's moods for sure. That should definitely be a priority. But yeah, I think we should maybe consider using Medigel on Rex right now. We got Tali in our prisoner cell. Who do we capture? A couple Krogans. We actually got the Enchanter Krogan captured, which is good. There was that one at the end, the Gun Nut, that would have been a really good fighter. I'm really sad that we couldn't capture them. But yeah, it was really good that we were able to capture Cracks in the Enchanter. Now, I'm not sure if we want to recruit 
target this person or if we just want to sell them off to Rimdeed. He's got a base market value of 11k. I made it so all casters have a four times increased market value and I feel like that kind of balances them out because they're so OP. But yeah, if we let Cracks in heal, we can sell them off for, well, not 11k probably, but he doesn't have any permanent injuries, so we will be able to sell him off for quite a bit. I'm not actually going to worry about that too much right now. I'm going to have Tali grab... Hopefully she's not going to grab, okay, she's going to grab three of the meta gel. I guess we'll just use it on Rex right now. Even though he's going to heal really quick, and I think the fact that we gave him Luciferium is actually going to increase his heal rate. Does Blood Filtration increase heal rate? I'm not really sure. Oh, and three meta gel actually healed him with a full. I don't know if we should have used it on him because he would have healed really quickly anyways, but what if we get raided again? Since he has no injuries though, he's not in any pain or anything, which I don't know if he actually was in pain before, but his mood is going up. No, you're not using Metagel on anyone right now. I don't even know why you're tending. Um, that dude's priorities were a bit messed up, but yeah. Looks like we might actually be okay here. Tali wants to use Glitter World and Morden. I mean, that's fine, I guess. Glitter World is increasing our wealth, so we want to get rid of it. I was having Rex pick up the remains of the raid. And since he has the commando armor on, he can carry 457 kg of stuff. It increases carrying capacity by 60, but he actually multiplies that because of his body size. When I noticed that Waterog, who actually apparently was not that good, he has extreme blood loss, but he's healed up to full. I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, we're going to have Rex definitely capture him. And there was also this tier 2 android. I don't know if you guys saw it earlier, but he was knocked out when their raid went wrong. And this dude's a Geomancer, a uh, caster class, and he's a value of 10 k which is surprising considering he has so much damage on him surprisingly he hasn't gotten up because it's been since day 16.08 we're on day 17.5 so it's been a day and a half and this dude just been sitting here let's have rex capture him though immediately and we'll have morden capture this dude so cracks and healed with the full we're gonna have girl strip him and then immediately after we're gonna trade the dude in for 9.8k before he has a chance to pick up his equipment when our orbital trade beacon that was in this room got destroyed i guess and yeah these rooms are a mess i assure you it is a temporary arrangement but yeah we're going to call in a I think bulk goods trader would have something that can boost people's moods because people are just in horrible moods like chocolate could actually oh and they got some auto machinery only three of it but yeah we should definitely buy this it's another one of those materials that you know i'm not really too sure about the balance aspect of it but if we can get 30 of it we can make it into a dagger this material is actually better it costs 291 a pop than the what was it pickle machinery that we got earlier but yeah, i'm not really sure what to buy people maybe just like some chocolate and then some lavish meals maybe and yeah, we're just gonna let people eat those like rex just saw a dead body we're trying to butcher up a lot of these Krogans that we just took out. But yeah, mainly I'm just going to be really surprised if we can get out of this without having mental breakdowns. So we got 11k silver in our stockpile room right now. And we're severely understaffed. I'm going to call in a bunch of these slave ships because Rimdy doesn't really have anyone that we want. And if we buy people from Rimdy, they're a lot more expensive. This Solarian is 1270 something. They're a Geomancer though, that's why. Oh, and Grill's doing our trading right now and he has no trade price improvement, so that's also why. But yeah, there's a few things I'm looking for. We kind of need a full-time cook to butcher up the raiders, but it would be nice if they don't mind seeing dead bodies. And what the heck is this thing? An Arcotech membrane it has a market value of 20,000, but it gives a thousand percent extra armor, which I'm pretty sure armor caps out at like 200%. I'm not sure how that works really, but it also increases general labor speed by a thousand percent, melee dodge chance by 10, part efficiency by 200%. We could potentially actually afford that for 28K. Who would we even give it to though? Like we don't really have anyone that needs more general labor speed. Maybe Morden and that general labor speed will allow to make stuff quicker and it will make him really tanky and he's also tough this could be epic actually for twenty thousand, we could have a perfectionist that's just cranking out stuff but yeah challenge accepted can we farm 28k well 18k actually in 1.9 days so we have tosca actually is ready for selling so we're gonna strip this guy this thrumkin which i never actually went over his stats he's overweight which lowers global work speed likes to sleep with a lot of people though which is odd that he would dislike women and also like to sleep with them. He doesn't really have any stats that we need though. So yeah, we're just gonna dump him. Let's pick up all his gear though first. We need every single penny that we can scrounge up right now. And like you guys may be saying, oh dude, Morden's not that good at combat. We can always use the Orb of Souls to give Morden better combat stats. If we find like a dead shot, for example, we can infuse that into him. But yeah, Remedy will buy Tosca for 1203. It's the same price that we get for selling him to a slave trader too. You get the same price for selling slaves, just harder to buy them. I think it costs double if you buy them from Remedy. 
We called in this bulkage trader earlier, so before they leave, we're gonna buy out all their silver if we can, which we definitely should be able to. I think we'll just sell off all the furs and leathers we can for now, even though we can make them into equipment. Because yeah, if we can pull this off, then we'll be able to turn more into equipment making machine. This slave ship will also buy some of these random weapons that we don't really need. And then we have 270 gold that we don't really need as well. But yeah, the majority of our money is gonna come from buying another bulkage trader or calling in more bulkage traders rather. Because yeah, they will buy like all this poplar lumber for 1800. Cypress lumber, we don't have much of that. Some bones. We've got a bunch of poplar logs and like cypress logs that we haven't cut yet. We'll just start selling these off because we can't cut them as quick as we can sell them basically. That's gonna be a lot of silver dropped in. It's definitely not gonna be enough though. And what I'm thinking right now is maybe we just do the raid play where we raid a nearby colony. Now I wanna do a test to see what the best colony would be to raid. Just in terms of, like if there's an advanced colony nearby like I'm pretty sure this Alliance fleet would be the most profitable to raid. I will say Morden is almost done with this Thrumble for Duster. No, you are not gonna eat. You are going to finish that duster. Did we sell off all the rest of the Thermofer? We still have 148 Thermofer. Nice, he made a Masterwork one, that's lucky. Okay, what about we hold off on the raid for now and we have Rex like deconstruct this tome. Which has, oh, it has a freaking Persona Plasma Saw. Okay, we actually don't want to sell that probably. We probably want to use that. 40 melee DPS, because it's Persona, I guess. The traits aren't especially good, I guess. It increases psychic sensitivity, makes it so the person doesn't disable pain, which it's not good on Rex, because I don't think he feels pain once he goes into Blood Rage, but it actually would be really good for Grill. He went to Pain Shock in the last raid. So yeah, it's a really nice weapon. We don't really want to sell it though. Let's open up this tome. We got some people that are hostile in here. These infusers from the enchanting mod are kind of annoying because they're in every tome. These guys are definitely going to charge us, aren't they? Got a Geth Hunter with a plasma shotgun. Okay, the inhabitants of the tome actually stopped chasing Rex, so we don't have to worry about that. Oh, and this Bulkage Trader actually has Architect Plant Matter. I really want to get my hands on that, but we only need 8k more silver for that epic implant. We actually needed to call in another Bulkage Trader, so that was 500 down. But yeah, we'll sell this Masterwork Thermal for a Duster for 2600. These pants as well well and then we'll start selling logs so we have a bunch of logs outside that we're hauling back in we got some lumber we'll sell the lumber before the logs i guess see so yeah, that's 3.3k more minus the 500 that it costed to call that trader in and now we're gonna have rex haul all this lumber there's tons of lumber out here we got some gear Krogan leather times 500. Another trader will buy 700 of our Krogan leather for four bucks a pop. That will actually almost buy all their 3K silver. It's all these tech prints. They do increase intellectual, but we have very little time left, I think. Sell some more lumber. We had some clothing lying around that I just brought to the beacon. Oh, this Chitin plate armor for 900. Somebody had that in their inventory. And this gold, shoes, gloves. Maybe we sell the gold actually to the slave trader. Let's see where this puts us. This is gonna be a lot of silver, I think. 3,300 outside plus 3k plus 1300 okay the slave ship will buy our gold this hardened shield belts then some of this other gear as well charge pistols sure um that's gonna be 1100 more i feel like we're close so close like tolly get close to the whatchamacallit thing and then rex just hauled in 700 logs and then he has this terror pulser we could sell that too i'd rather raid with it but i really want this input 1200 logs in here that's gonna be 1300 that's definitely gonna be enough like for sure like there's no doubt in my head that we have enough and yeah we're at 28.9 so what was the trader that had it otis interstellar and <laughs> the thing only costs 19.4 because we're trading with tolly not whoever we were trading with before that had no social so that was just so much drama leading up to well i mean we got it that's the main thing and we have 10k left over we definitely sold some stuff off that we didn't probably have to but screw it we freaking got it let's go dude i also just realized we could have just sold off this robot tronar for quite a bit he has a value of 10k like i didn't even think about selling the prisoners for some reason i i don't know what just went through my head speaking of things going through heads we're installing this into morden's head and there is no chance this fails i think 104 percent surgery success chance for the this room and the implant actually has no chance to fail usually at least with android brain implants there's a like 10 percent chance that if it does fail it will kill whoever it's implanted into and there's like a 20 percent chance that it will fail but yeah with this there was no chance it fails his brain only does have 8 hp though i'm not sure if that's a solarian thing or if that's a architect membrane thing but yeah his armor should not be that high, I think. I mean, it says he has a thousand percent armor. I don't know if that's actually realistic. And like, he can't be hit because it's armor against heat too and blunt. So like, 
I don't know. It would have been really good to give to one of our melee fighters too, but that 1000% increased general labor speed would have been a complete waste. I'm actually pretty excited to see how quickly Morden will start crafting like really good stuff. So that's epic. Morden's currently under the effects of anesthesia. Oh, and Merle is actually trying to hit on Tali for like the eighth time. Yeah, he's got rebuffed by Tali times two right now. Anyway, so in preparation for Morden to wake up, I'm wondering if we should start buying like this anima thrumbo fur from traders. This stuff has 1200% beauty, so it'd be a really good thing to make in to like a chair or something but i think we will still buy all this for 3.3k and we can turn it into some really nice stuff and let's buy back like 200 of the krogan leather and then let's buy some of this light leather too and we'll see if we can turn like some kind of profit out of this i didn't really see how much that costed us but i believe we had 9.9k when we started those transactions Oh, and then Morden's beginning to realize his full potential. He's making the duster very quickly compared to he made a masterwork one. So he is still under the effects of anesthesia though. His consciousness is much lower than it normally would be. It says his implant gives him 200% part efficiency. So I think that will boost his consciousness to 200% once he's off the effects of anesthesia, which is capping his consciousness out at 70 right now. It's also lowering his manipulation, a lot of stuff too. And okay, he made another masterwork one. He's making it so quickly. So the anesthesia is wearing off. His consciousness is max 90 now. And okay, he's making it so fast. Like this is on one speed. This room is really dirty, by the way. We need someone to get in here and clean it up. What's the market value on this? 36.50. It gives 113% sharp protection. It's quite a bit. On this one's just excellent. It has a market value of 2200. I think that's still profit though. Dude, I can only imagine once the anesthesia just completely wears off and his consciousness just zooms up to, I think it's gonna be 200. If it becomes 200, that's gonna be epic. The market value of our base did just increase by quite a bit though. So it's kind of one of those things where we just gotta go, go, go. We're just gonna sell off this duster. I wonder if he is using an apron, by the way, to increase labor speed and global work speed. Let's actually not sell off the apron. On this trader, I actually had four more atom machinery, so we're gonna buy that from them. Will they buy another duster? Yeah, they will. So we're up to seven atom machinery now. Just need 23 more of that, at least to make a knife. That's what we wanna do with it. Oh, I think we're getting a raid. And okay, crap, we're getting raided. Oh no, dude. Okay, wait, maybe we use our psychic pulsar thing to make these raiders run. What kind of market value are we at right now? Because yeah, our wealth is 160k right now. That's why this raid's so fat. It's a Vorkin raid too. Imagine trying to fight Vorkins that are just regenerating constantly. Yeah, I think we're just gonna use the terror pulsar and we're gonna have these guys run away. Hopefully. Yeah, they're gonna run. Okay, well, that raid didn't happen, but it was a wake-up call, that's for sure. So Morden's making some light leather dusters that are only selling for 280 if they're excellent. That's not worth, I think. And like the Masterwork light leather duster is selling for 404 a pop. And light leather is pretty much free. 80 of it costs us, what, like 120 silver, I think? So Masterwork's pretty worth. Excellent, not so much worth. The Thrumbo for duster, though, is where we're getting our big bucks. We just got kind of lucky from that one trader, though. Like, a lot of them don't even have any leathers at all. Oh, we can call in a textiles trader too. I didn't think about that. And these guys are some people that we want to deal with. So what the heck? They have this OP material, like a lot of it. Did we just win the game? They have 10 auto machinery, 18 Pico machinery, and they have like any textile really that we could want possibly. Okay, first we're going to buy out all their anima thrombo fur. I know that sells for quite a bit. And while we're doing that, we're sending Rex back out here to take care of this phalanx. He's using the Masterwork grinder, which has a ton of armor pen and it should. Oh yeah. It's attacking quickly. Weapons that attack quickly like this don't do much damage each hit. Like the DPS just kind of averages out to be, what was it, like 11 or something? It has a lot of armor pen though, so it's owning this thing. And actually, I think the fact that it's attacking so fast, just made a masterwork light leather duster, okay, no one cares. Since it's attacking so fast though, and it has the stun chance, that actually might be an OP combo, now I think about it. Because we were pretty much perma stun locking that thing. But yeah, we gotta begin the process of extracting everything out of these tomes and deconstructing them. Oh, we got some mechs coming over here. You want a mess? I'm actually kind of down right now. You're stunned. You're exploded on. You're stunned again. You literally can't move. Stunned again. Okay, this thing might be OP. Let's actually just go in here and see if we can take on like this Geth Masterwork Light Leather Duster. We gotta stop making Light Leather Dusters, dude. Oh, and this Geth Hunter actually hit Rex immediately. But he's owning it, and it's dead. I don't know if a Geth Hunter is like some amazing thing. Oh, and he got hit, so he has more movement now. That's why he's moving so fast. He's pissed. 
Pikeman actually got a shot off on him and whack off. We had to grab all this stuff. There's some Luciferium in here too, which is nice. We could have another person actually take Luciferium like Grill, our other melee guy. I noticed that this Bulkus trader has a couple of these pedigreed raptors, which do, I guess, not that much DPS. They'll increase the beauty of any room by 15% that it's present at. We're just going to pick both of these up and we're going to use them as like cannon fodder if we need to. This Bulkus trader has a bunch of night mules. We're just going to buy these and we're going to send them in as fodder. And if they die, then we can skin them. And yeah, they do pretty good DPS, much better than our raptors. And they have like, what, one third of the value? I think we bought these for like 600 a pop. And to pay for those, we'll just casually sell them a couple dusters. And all right, so I do have a bit of an update. Morden's anesthesia is worn off. And <laughs> I'm not sure if he caught that, but yeah, that duster wasn't... Um, okay, yeah, there we go. That is how quickly he's making dusters now at one time speed. So his consciousness is now at 300%. I guess the Argotech membrane increases it by 200%. He now has 2059% general labor speed. And we actually can buff this up by quite a bit because you can see his global work speed is only 57%. Being a perfectionist lowers it by like 35%, I think. But since his global work speed is so low, it's effectively cutting everything in half as far as I know. I think that's how the math works. I'm not really sure, but we'll be looking for ways to increase his global work speed so we can crank out more super nice stuff in the next episode because we're actually on day 20 now it's been 10 days and so yeah that's gonna be it for this episode thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one